so good morning everyone in our last class uh, we have uh, discussed about uh, how to design low pass filter high pass filter then from there we discussed how we can design band pass filter band reject filter okay then we also discussed about uh, uh, notch filter over here in this way uh, we have uh, uh, discussed that by the placement of holes and zeros how we can design uh, different types of filters in the continuous time domain okay now before we uh, proceed further <clears throat> you please keep this in mind suppose we are given with some uh, some complex numbers a plus jb in this format okay and if i ask you to find out the phase so this means when i say that a plus jb so a minus jb it should be represented as a plus of minus b j okay so in that condition you will be having tan inverse of uh, b by a okay in the first quadrant second may aapka aayega tan inverse of b by a plus pi uh, third may tan inverse of b by a minus pi and fourth quadrant pe tan inverse of b by a okay so <clears throat> this you should keep this in mind right uh, the problem is many students they do mistake so this uh, formulas it will be needed for you while solving the uh, phase responses for the filter okay so learn this by heart this is the only thing you need to do apart from this <coughs> upon the axis if you are having uh, b equals to 0 then you uh, that means the positive real axis then your uh, this phase value it would be 0 if it is on the imaginary axis it would be pi by 2 it if it is on the uh, negative uh, real axis then it is minus pi and negative imaginary axis then it is minus pi by 2 so basically zero because this is the line and if you start from here so it starts with zero so zero degree as you move over here uh, it comes out to be pi by 2 and for the rest of the things this is minus uh, pi by 2 and this is minus pi or uh, pi whatever uh, you want to say so usually if you consider this one tan inverse of b by a minus pi so it comes out to be minus pi so we will put it as minus pi right now <clears throat> uh, again before we move forward uh, let's look into the uh, s plane to the z plane uh, mapping this is the s plane so the left hand side plane we have already discussed that it will be map within the unit circle the right hand side it is outside the unit circle and you are having uh, this imaginary axis this imaginary axis it is plotted over the unit circle okay now what are the characteristics of this kya ba bahut muskura rahe ho do you want to share anything with us no ya akela ke liye sara ye mujhe itne ye karoge you can share with the class there is anything funny uh, so next is when we talk about the characteristics of the z plane what happens i told you we start with 0 degree we come to 180 degree and then again we come to 360 degree 0 degree and the 360 degree they match over uh, themselves okay now this 360 degree it is uh, represented by fs that is the sampling frequency of the digital signal or the sampling frequency of the digital systems at which it will be working okay and here we will be having the fm which is the maximum legal frequency that can be processed by a digital system because we are getting into the filters filters are nothing but they are systems so in that term if you see fm is the maximum frequency uh, maximum legal frequency that can be processed by a Uh, digital system okay now uh, as i told you this uh, circle it is having a radius of 1 okay and 0 degree and 360 degree there is an overlap okay and 
as you see this uh, angle it varies from 0 to 2 pi now while we will be uh, talking about this uh, analog filters and the digital filters uh, together why we want to uh, talk about them together the reason being initially when the filters were designed the filters were designed in the analog domain or the continuous time domain right now when the researchers they started to design digital filters they took the information from the continuous time system systems and they applied those logic into the digital systems to design the digital filters so due to that reason why we will be discussing about the uh, designing of the digital filters in many a cases we will be talking about both analog domain and the digital domain so under that circumstance you will be having two frequency one is the analog frequency and the other is the digital frequency conventionally the analog frequency they are represented with this omega okay and digital frequency it will be represented with this omega okay so w type omega right so you have to keep this in mind if i give that j omega is uh, say some xx radians then you have to understand that this frequency is the analog frequency okay so accordingly you have to work on now <coughs> while we were discussing the digitization process we also discussed about the nyquist rate and we have discussed about that fs should be greater than or equal to 2 of fm okay now when we increase the fs suppose we are having uh, in the critical case when fs equals to 2 of fm we discussed so fs at this critical junction we get the uh, spectrum band which is spread up like this and quite often what happens uh, if uh, proper uh, anti-aliasing procedure has not been taken place or there are any spectral leakage they will be mixing up the mixing up of the uh, frequency components and that would lead to the uh, generation of the signals which are aliased in nature and they will be distorted however if you are using uh, low cause uh, signal acquisition system in our lab we have found that we cannot work at this fs equal to 2 of fm uh, this critical limit this limit it is actually fs greater than equal to 10 of fm this is i am talking about practically theoretically fs equal uh, fs is greater than equal to 2 of fm but practically when you are working with low cost uh, uh, data acquisition systems uh, in those cases you will find fs greater than equal to 10 of fm it is giving you a recreatable signal okay so what happens over here what happens over here why this is important now if you see if you are working with say uh, this uh, fm of say uh, this uh, yeah fm of say of uh, 500 hertz or say uh, maybe 200 hertz why 200 hertz because ecg signals they are usually regarded as uh, they have a frequency component in the range of 0 0.5 and 100 hertz right now since fm is uh, 100 we consider this as uh, 200 okay now if you see if fs is 200 here we are having 100 okay now if i have to place <coughs> uh, this uh, say for the notch filter which will be easier for the us <coughs> say for example uh, uh, you have 50 hertz noise power line interference and you want to remove that uh, interference you want to place a zero where you will be uh, placing a zero so 100 is over here it's 50 percent is uh, 50 so at um, uh, so 
this is 180 degree what is it is 50 percent at 90 degree so at 90 degree we will be placing a zero over here to suppress the 50 hertz noise component right now when we do that if you see we are placing the zero over here now on the other hand if you increase this to say 1000 hertz the f is equal to 1000 hertz then if you see your 0 degree uh, this um, yeah, your 100 degree or 100 hertz it would be coming at 36 degrees ok somewhere over here ok or maybe is yeah if you consider this as the 50 percent so your 45 degree angle then it would be somewhere over here so see initially you are having the 100 hertz at pi now you are having this 100 hertz at 36 degree right now what you are left with you are left with only this portion to design your filter right so 36 ka half 18 degree mein you need to place the zero right to suppress the thing but if you see when you talk about 18 within a very small distance the frequencies they are varying very fast so under those circumstances designing of the filter it becomes very difficult say for example uh, take an example that uh, there are 30 decks and there are 30 students in the class okay now everyone they are sitting comfortably now if i add 30 more students okay there are uh, in a desk usually there are two uh, students they can sit easily but your previous comfort it will be lost right again if i say if i add another 30 students into the uh, classroom then in a single desk you have to uh, in a single desk three students have to sit in a single desk right now it is getting more tighter and tighter for you to perform your work in a convenient manner the same thing happens over here when your frequency components they are placed very close to each other under that circumstance where will you place the poles where will you place the zeros because once you place the zeros at a particular point it will also be affecting the nearby frequency components drastically okay because its effects will be very high how you can estimate that you can estimate that because uh, from the rubber membrane concept if you consider this rubber membrane concept this slope will be the same because the same uh, because your uh, this is same uh, what do you call uh, space is same z plane is same for everything whether you sample it at uh, 1000 hertz or you sample it at uh, 200 hertz the space is same right but since you have sampled at a higher frequency now if you see if you look into the frequency components after this thing this rate per unit of frequency it will be very high so it will be affecting the nearby frequencies drastically so the designing of the filter it will become very complex for you it will be becoming uh, very difficult for you so this is one of the disadvantages of this one okay but what it does is that when you are sampling it at a higher Nyquist rate or a higher rate uh, higher sampling frequency you get a region which is regarded as the dead zone okay in that dead zone there would be no frequency components present okay since there would be no frequency component present your question of aliasing it does not arise okay so somewhere from here to here you have to come to some compromise so that you get an optimal dead zone and you also do not get the uh, aliasing because of this uh, dead zone 
and you get sufficient area to work upon your filter okay so somewhere you have to uh, bring into effect the cost uh, effectivity also the because if you go for a very cheap this thing if you go for a, a say a data acquisition system which is having a cost of say only 20000 or 18000 20000 over there you will find this problem that uh, even at uh, low uh, this thing say near to the uh, critical nacus rate you will not be able to sample it properly and you are having the aliasing however if you try to go towards the 50000 or 50k Mm, rupees 50k my data acquisition systems over there your data acquisition uh, this thing data acquisition it will be bit better okay again if you go towards uh, 1 lakh data acquisition system rupees 1 lakh data acquisition system they will far far better so somewhere depending upon your project price and all these things you have to come to a uh, compromise that yeah uh, this would be my price and this would be my Uh, compromise on the whatever the problem I face, I will deal it in my software. Okay, so somewhere you have to come to the compromise. Right? Now uh, you need to understand some of the critical things. As I already told you that we in the digital domain we are only having frequency component zero to three sixty degree. We can only place in this area. Okay. and that too if you want to place the frequencies it would be fm should be over here but in the analog domain if you see the frequency components they start from minus infinity and they appear from up to infinity now in digital frequencies when you are converting it what is happening your zero degree the zero hertz is here you come to the fm you come over here again suppose this is uh, 1000 hertz so see Zero and thousand hertz, they are being plot at the same region. Okay, or if you say it's two uh, hundred hertz, then consider it as two hundred. But I am taking the FS as the uh, yes thousand hertz in this example, which I am uh, talking about today. Now again, you move. There will be uh, this overlap of the frequencies. Again, you come over here. Again, two thousand hertz. It will be. at the same position again you will be moving so what is happening there is many to one mapping okay there is many to one mapping okay so we have to keep that in mind while designing the digital filters when you are trying to design a filter taking information from the continuous time uh, systems you need to remember that if you do that then there would be many to one mapping and you have to overcome those uh, disadvantages or you have to implement certain steps so as to you can remove this many to one mapping okay so it is while designing the digital filters through the analog uh, systems this is the only critical portion okay this is the only critical portion okay how to avoid the many to one mapping Okay. Now, <clears throat> what are the characteristics of the analog filters and the digital filters? So we have to talk about both the S plane and the Z plane. So number of poles greater than equal to number of the zeros. There is no change in the digital domain. Poles they should be placed on the left hand side of the S plane here inside the unit circle. z planes they can be placed anywhere on the uh, zeros they can be placed anywhere on the s plane uh, here also zeros can be placed anywhere on the z plane so there is no change okay. now uh, coming to the this uh, digital filter design okay just like the analog filters over here also if you see we have taken the z plane this is the z plane okay and we are having certain poles and certain zeros which would be regarded as the vectors here in in the previous case we were considering p we were considering the point p on the j omega axis right here in where is the frequency axis frequency axis is the unit circle 
so we have to consider the point p on to the unit circle okay accordingly if you see similar kind of for uh, equation z equals to bn z minus z1 z minus z2 uh, z minus z in divided by uh, z minus tau 1 z minus uh, tau 2 up to z minus tau 1 okay so these are the poles the roots of this one are the poles and the roots of this one are the zeros okay again rectangular to polar coordinate we get similar kind of equation again if you see we are having a similar kind of equation over here right then what is the modulus modulus is bn product of the distance of zeros to the frequency axis divided by the product of the distance of poles to the frequency axis okay and what is the phase phase is sum of zero angles to the point minus sum of pole angles to that particular point okay any doubt till now no good <coughs> now let us uh, take an example so what is happening you are having this um, say z plane so this is our real z this is imaginary z so this is the transfer function of a filter so what is the transfer function of a filter it is given z equals to 1 by z minus 0.9 phase angle of 0 now you have to remember that when you have to find out what is the location of the poles and the zeros your transfer function should be in the it should be containing the z in the term of z okay however when you are trying to realize a filter this z terms should be present as z inverse term why i talked about some operators couple of days back what are the operators operators for a digital filter couple of days back i only discussed maybe monday monday or tuesday jor se jor se ha one is multiplier one is multiplier adder delay so for the realization we need delay that is the z inverse term okay but for the for determining the location of the poles and the zeros it should be in the this form okay so you talk about this um, transfer function it is given as 1 divided by z minus 0.9 uh phase angle of 0 degree okay now if you try to put it into the rectangular coordinates 1 by z minus 0.9 okay and if you multiply with the z to the power minus 1 divided by z to the power minus 1 that is z to the power minus n if you want to generalize it what is the n n is nothing but the highest power of either the numerator or the denominator okay because we said xz it is equal to pz by qz so the highest power of pz and qz it is regarded as the n okay and this n it is regarded as the order of the filter okay now by default by default what happens is that we have discussed that the uh, the number of the poles they should be greater than equal to the number of the zeros so by default you can say 
this n is the highest power of uh, this uh, qz highest power of qz right okay um, provided the filter is a realizable filter provided the filter is a realizable filter okay now when you do that you will find that you are getting the same tra uh, transfer function in the term of z inverse component so this transfer function it would be used for the implementation or the realization of the filter whereas here in in the first form we will be using that for the detection of the location of the poles and the zeros and from there we will be taking the stuff now if you see when we convert it in, into this format 1 by z minus 0.9 so we got that there is a pole at 0.9 so if you see we, I have already plotted a pole at 0.9 now in your exams you will be getting uh, questions that you have got this um, transfer function excuse me now you determine the amplitude response and the phase response at 0 pi by 4 pi by 2 3 pi by 4 and pi okay now how to do that the thing is that if you see there is no dc gain okay so there is no dc gain so while we will be trying to find out the amplitude response our equation would be hz equals to say at particular frequency omega it would be 1 by d d is distance to the point omega okay now at 0 it is 1 by what is the distance of this pole to the 0 degree 0 0.1 so what is the gain 10 however if there would have been a multiplier bn so at that case that multiplier would have come over here bn multiplied by 1 by 0 0.1 in this case we will consider bn as equal to 1 because it is 1 right so we are having 10 okay next at pi what is happening this is 1 this is 0.9 so 1 by 0.9 so whatever you will be getting that would be your amplitude response now today you have to find out the response of pi by 4 pi by 2 3 pi by 4 now how to do that i will not tell you so say pi by 4 we are having this point over here right what is this radius 1 you know the angle pi by 4 right you should be able to calculate the base right base you have calculated also you will be in, yeah so base uh, you can calculate from here right say it is a n then from this point to this pole you will be getting b n what is b n b n is nothing but 0 0.9 minus of a n right this height you already know from here you can calculate so what is the distance between this t point uh, this point pi by 4 and this uh, location it is basically the hypotenuse so you can calculate it right the same thing happens over here you know this distance because these are conjugate one you take this distance so this is pi by 4 again you will be able to get this distance ok so this distance plus 0.9 right 
now you calculate the hypotenuse from here right so you will be able to calculate this one blank face kyun hai so you will be able to calculate this point so this is the distance between the pole and this um, uh, 3 pi by 4 right so that you have got so pi by 2 it will be pretty easy for you to calculate so pi by 2 point is here so you will be able to calculate this point right so this is how you will be calculating the amplitude response okay now next coming for the phase response what would be the phase response here at zero it would be the zero degree right what would be the phase of this one the angle from here to here that would be your phase can you calculate because if you see that while calculating the distance you already know this angle total angle is 180 degree so 180 minus this angle so you will be able to calculate this angle. so that would be the phase okay similarly over here also you can calculate the phase at this point also pi by 2 also you will be able to you know, calculate the phase okay so in this way you have to do the thing right so do you have any questions then we can discuss otherwise we can stop here and we can do the numerical yes uh huh what i one calculation you tell me uh, because i don't have the calculator kahan pe hai ye dekho suppose this is pi by 4 this angle this is 1 okay so we are having hypotenuse and angle we need this one right perpendicular uh, this thing so perpendicular and hypotenuse is sin okay so we put the value perpendicular you need to find out p by h is sin theta p by h sin of what is the angle pi by 4 kitna ho raha hai so p equal to 1 multiplied by ye pi by 4 uh, 0.707 hai shayad right Hmm. So 0.707. Now this angle is this BN over here. What it is? 0.9 minus 0.707. कितना है? 0.19. 0.193, right? So this distance is 0.193. Perpendicular, you have already calculated. अच्छा ये base होगा sorry, base by hypotenuse. So यहाँ पे base कॉस्ट पाई बाई फोर कितना है हाँ तो फिर वो सेम रहेगा परपेंडिकुलर इज ऑल्सो सेम तो पहले वाला कॉस्ट आएगा फर्स्ट व्हेन यू वांट टू कैलकुलेट द ये एंड देन दिस वन इज फॉर कैलकुलेटिंग द परपेंडिकुलर दिस इज योर थिंग यू हैव द परपेंडिकुलर ये 
इसको आपको पता है जीरो पॉइंट वन नाइन थ्री टिकोनोमेटिक फंक्शन लगाइए वट इज द डिस्टेंस यू फाइंड आउट एंड वट वुड बी द एंगल आपका बेस एंड हाइपोटेन्यूस का बेस एंड हाइपोटेन्यूस बेस बाई हाइपोटेन्यूस इज इक्वल टू कॉस्थीटा तो वट वुड बी योर थीटा कॉस इनवर्स ऑफ बेस बाई हाइट एंगल निकल गया आपका ये फेज रिस्पॉन्स के लिए बोल रहा हूं सो so, 180 एट्टी माइनस या फिर पाई माइनस दैट थिंग अगर रेडियंस में कर रहे हैं तो ये टेक केयर ऑफ योर ये डिग्रीज में कर रहे हैं या फिर आप रेडियंस में कर रहे हैं रेडियंस में अगर पाई में कर रहे हैं तो पाई में सेट योर क्वेश्चन इन दैट वे तो पाई माइनस या फिर 180 एंड एटी माइनस वट एवर यूल बी गेटिंग इट्स इजियर टू डू द थिंग इन डिग्रीज ओके उसका ये कर लो तो वहां पे आपको ये एंगल फेज मिल जाए एट पाई बाई फोर राइट सिमिलरली एट दिस लोकेशन यू ऑलरेडी नोन यर ऑल्सो इट वॉज दिस इज पाई बाई फोर वट वुड बी द बेस 0.707 you just calculated what is this 0.707 plus 0.9 this you already know perpendicular is also 0.707 right hypotenuse nikal जस्ट टिग्नोमेट्रिक फंक्शन एंगल क्या होगा यू नो द बेस यू नो द हाइपोटेन्यूस बाय दिस टाइम इनवर्स करके बेस हाइपोटेन्यूस आपको पता है कॉस इनवर्स ऑफ बेस बाय हाइपोटेन्यूस आपको थीटा मिल जाएगा सो थीटा दैट थीटा इज बेसिकली 180 एंड एटी माइनस दैट थीटा विल गिव यू दिस फेस Okay. Any other doubt? <coughs> जब भी फेज निकालोगे एक्स एक्सिस के पैरल में लाइन नेक ड्रॉ करोगे बेसिकली यहां पर भी आपका जिस पॉइंट में देखना है यूल बी गोइंग एंटी क्लॉक वाइज टू दैट पॉइंट ओके नहीं अदर क्वेश्चन नो चलो करो आप लोग थैंक यू